I can't, I can't do the whistle. Could you please, could you please just do the thing? Please? Come on, you're embarrassing me in front of all my cool friends. Hey, this is Mary Poppins, y'all. <laughs> Just a word of caution before we begin. I'm actually going to be showing you how to use Trap code particular to create this effect, but that is a third party plugin. It does not come standard with After Effects. So if you don't have it as an alternative, on the website you'll find that I've created a bunch of pre made assets you could use instead, including several comp in effects. So anytime you're on the website and you see this here C slash I that stands for comp in and there'll be two corresponding effects so this one is C I yaka arrow one front and then here you'll find the back C one yaka arrow one back and also here's the full one in case you don't want to use this comp in feature but it's really cool and I'm just going to demonstrate how to use it right now I'm going to go ahead and download both of these the front and the back these are called Yaka arrows on the website because in the comics that's what Yondu's arrow is called. But um, you can also find these on the website by searching Yondu, even if you spell it wrong. See, I didn't spell it right, but uh, here they are anyway, because I know it's hard to remember is a weird word, so I made sure to account for that. I also want to point out that these were a requested effect. If you click this tiny production create logo here and click user requests, you can see all of the requests that we have in our queue that are from users like you. And you can pick the ones you like and vote them up so that they'll get higher on the list. You know, the higher it is on the list, the more likely it is that we'll recognize that a lot of people want it and we'll make it. So make sure to check that out. Also, you can leave requests anywhere. You can leave them in the description of this tutorial if you want. You can leave them down here in the comments. This probably makes the most sense. So I'm just gonna bring both of those in. My rotoscoped footage, it's a bad roto, and uh, the footage itself, and these two effects, the front and the back. I'll just leave the front one in front and drop the back one behind my roto. Maybe change both of those to a screen transfer mode. And if we just let that play through, so there you go. If you don't have particular or you don't want to use particular, you don't need to. You can just download the pre-made effects and that is all you need really. So keep on watching if you want to see how to make this. If you don't care how to make this and you just want to know how to use the stock footage, there you go. I'll start with the color correcting portion of the tutorial. The original takeaway from this portion was going to be the importance of planning, but my planning didn't really go according to plan. So my new takeaway from this portion is that I'm going to show you the versatility of the hue and saturation effect. Let me show you what I mean. So I shot this in a parking garage and I'm wearing a, a black jacket with a gray shirt and a gray shirt under it. So the idea is that the only thing in this scene that really has color is my skin and my eyes because everything else around me is gray. You can't really see any trees or any cars or anything like that. And that was unintentionally. However, the sunlight has given me kind of a blue cast and I guess I wasn't, I didn't have the right white balance or something. So uh, all my gray is actually kind of blue and green, but uh, that's okay. We're going to handle it. So I'm going to apply the hue saturation effect to it. I'm going to start by rotating my hue basically all the way around until my skin starts to turn blue and my eyes kind of start to go red. And then I'll add a curves effect because I'm not really seeing a lot of my blue coming through. So let me just switch the channel to blue and just start bringing in some more blue. And now on top of these, we can add another hue saturation effect and really start to dial this in. So now we can go to just affecting our blues and we can crank up the saturation of those. And using these triangles and squares up here, 
we can actually change what colors are being affected. Now it is kind of a happy accident that I ended up with red clothes. I didn't plan that, obviously I intended to have gray clothes on, but the sunlight ruined those plans. But that this actually is really close to the color that Yondu wears in the movie. It's just a little less saturated than this. And also our background is now totally pink and that's not what we want. So I'm gonna add another hue saturation effect to it. And this one, we're just going to affect the reds and we can bring our reds down now until our background starts to go gray like it's supposed to. And our background is really more pink than red, so I'm just gonna move these controls out to get more of that included in my saturation change. But now my eyes have gone gray, and that's not what I want. So what I'm gonna do is show you this new-ish feature that you might not know about. I can go ahead and add a mask around the eyes. Yeah, and under the mask properties, I can feather it out a bit and I can set it to subtract. And now if I twirl open the effect controls and come down to this last hue saturation, we have these compositing options down here and this is available on every single effect now in After Effects. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the plus sign and it'll automatically look for masks and choose the first mask. So since we have that mask set to subtract, it's going to subtract from just that effect. So see if we were to set that to add, now the eyes are gray and everything else that was gray before is now red. So that is a nifty little trick in my opinion. So that is how you turn a dude blue. One more thing you wanna think about uh, if you're gonna be doing something like this is that you wanna have as nice footage as possible. Shoot in a high resolution, make sure you have plenty of light. And the reason is if you apply a color grade as extreme as this one, it really starts to accentuate and bring out all the flaws in your footage. So now, while this looks all right, this is basically unusable. So definitely keep that in mind. Make sure your footage is as nice as possible if you're doing this. Before we move on to the main course, I'll also talk about the arrow for a second. In my main shot that the tutorial is actually about, I actually don't have an arrow at all. It's just like a red beam of light. So I don't want you to think that you need a 3D arrow. If you want an arrow in your shot, it doesn't even have to be 3D. You could just use an image and probably get away with it as long as you're not zooming right in on it or whatever. But of course, you could go on the internet and try to download an arrow, uh, but some of them are free but not very good and some are exactly what you want, but they're not free. And you could buy it, but really it's not necessary because I just made mine in Element 3D just using primitives and it wasn't hard to figure out at all. But once again, this is not something that's necessary for you to do as well. I just wanted to show the process that I went through for those that were curious. Okay, man, eight and a half minutes later, and here we finally are. I'm gonna show you how to make the arrow trail itself in particular. So I have my footage, which has already been color graded. You know how to do that. I have the roto above it. And like I said before, this roto is pretty bad, but that's okay because I'm not really putting anything major behind it. I just needed to block out a tiny little line. So uh, no need to do more work than was necessary, I say. So that's my roto. And let's go ahead and make some nulls. So I'm gonna add this null object here and I'm gonna call it middle control. And I'm gonna put that kind of right, right in the middle here. And I need to make it 3D, of course. And I'm gonna make a new null object and I'm gonna parent it to the first one. And I'm gonna call this null object arrow control. So we can do some separate auxiliary animation on that. And I'll make it 3D as well, of course, and move it out like this. So it's kind of off to the side. And then I need a new light and I'll call this emitter. And the reason I'm calling it emitter is because particular requires it to be called emitter in order to recognize it as an emitter. So spell that with a capital E, call it emitter. And I'm gonna hold down shift and parent it to the arrow control. And what holding down shift does is it causes it to inherit the position and rotation and everything of the layer you're parenting it to. So now it's exactly in the same spot that saves me the step of having to copy the position information and stuff. And I'm just gonna move it up a little bit so it's above that null. And that is my rig. And so let's go ahead and add 
our solid, which uh, we're going to use to house our particular effect. So I'm going to call that particular and drop particular onto it. And just to set it up real quick, uh, we want the emitter behavior to be continuous. Particles per second is going to be huge. I'm thinking like 6,000. And we want our emitter to be the light. And we're just going to take down the velocity to zero, the velocity random and distribution to zero, velocity for motion. I'm going to take to zero, but that's personal preference. If you want the particles to be flung out a little bit, go ahead and turn that up a little bit. And the emitter size, I'll bring down to zero on all axes. So now we have one single little lonely dot here. That's actually particles being emitted, but our emitter is not moving. So that's why it's just one dot. So why don't we remedy that and start to move the emitter a little bit. So we'll start with the middle control. And my idea behind this was that we can rotate this and it's going to cause our other null that's controlling the arrow to move around. And we can do this with expressions. Oh, I didn't scare you by saying expressions, but it's going to be really easy. I'm going to hit R to bring up the orientation and the rotation. And I'm going to hit Alt and just click the stopwatch next to the Y to add an expression and type time times 500. And what that's going to do is it's going to make our middle null just rotate really fast. And that's actually not fast enough for my liking. So I'm going to bring it up to a thousand. And the higher this number is, the faster it's going to rotate. So that might be okay for now. We can also change the scale of this middle null. So if we bring it down low, then our emitter is going to start towards my body. And then towards the middle of the shot, we can bring it out really far and then bring it back in and then bring it back in in the end. Now we have this thing moving in a spiral. It's looking a little bit jagged. So I'm going to change the position subframe to 10 times smooth and that'll smooth it right out. Okay, so another thing we can do to add more randomness to this is we can add an expression on the position of the arrow control. So I'm going to highlight the arrow control and hit P and under position, I'm just going to alt click the stopwatch, type an expression, wiggle with a lowercase w, open parentheses, maybe three, which will make it change three times a second. And we're going to change it by a value of 100. And let's just see what that looks like. Not really random enough, so we can speed it up by changing this three to a higher number. And that's looking pretty good to me. Another thing we can do to add some cool little flips, which is the, the reason we have the emitter hovering above our null here, is so that we can hit R on the keyboard to bring up the rotation property. And if we set a keyframe on the X rotation and then move forward a couple of frames and change it to like two revolutions or something, now our, our beam does a little flip here. See, you can do that as many times as you want. I'm just gonna randomly add a few. So I'll move further down, uh, add a new keyframe and then move down a couple and change this two to a four. So it flips a couple more times. Okay, so it looks like um, I'm liking that motion. But something to know about the wiggle expression is that it's random depending on the order of the layer. So if you don't want this to change, but you're going to be adding more layers, you can just add a keyframe anywhere in position and right click it, go to keyframe assistant and hit convert expression to keyframes. And now that's not going to move. And another thing you could do, I'm not going to do it, but you could also add another wiggle on top of this. So say you wanted a big wiggle to where it moves slowly, but it moves a lot. And then you could add a smaller wiggle on top of that where it moves quickly, but slow. So it'll be like a, a jaggedy line but I want this to be mostly smooth save for the few flips. So now in the particular effect itself we need to do a little more work on this. So I'm going to change my particle life to something smaller like 0.6 even that's too big 0.3. Cool that's about what I want it to be and I'll change the size over life of the particles to just this linear preset where it just gets smaller as it goes so that way they kind of fade out instead of not fading out I suppose. And now we need to do something to the color and we're gonna we're gonna alter the color over life okay so we can change this set color value to over life 
and then twirl down that dialog box there, or whatever it is. And I'm gonna make my first color white and then have it change into red, here red. And then from there, I want it to change into gray, but I'm not just gonna select like a mid gray color because that's not gonna match my footage that stands out a lot. I wanna select something in the footage that represents gray. So I have kind of this pink cast going right now, but that's actually supposed to be gray. So what I'll do is I'll just select it with the eyedropper. So in real life, that's not not gray but in the context of the shot that's what gray looks like so there we go now we have our colors set up now I want to set up some physics so I'll twirl open the physics property and we're gonna keep it on air and I'll need to add some turbulence so I'll go ahead and change the effect size up I'm sorry I'll go ahead and change the effect position up and then I can also mess with the scale of it if you bring it up it'll get more tight and then there's also the fade in time and if you increase that it'll keep your line straight at the beginning and only start to get messed up like as it turns gray which is what I want because this red part is supposed to be like laser beam energy and then the gray part is supposed to be smoke so there we go that is looking pretty great to me unfortunately I'm standing behind the entire thing and that's no good so I can actually come down to visibility open that up and I can change my obscuration layer to be my rotoscope footage which she yelled at me because I didn't make it 3d I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm really sorry I should have made it 3d please don't yell at me again so we can just change that roto to a 3d layer now it's being affected by our light, but that doesn't really matter. We can just turn it off. And then in particular, try again to change it to Roto. And now I've got part of the particular going behind me, which is great. Now I remember before when I was talking about the wiggle expression and how it can get messed up if you change the layer order. So we, we did a, a fix to make it so that it wouldn't happen, but now we're gonna do that on purpose. We're gonna use it to our advantage because I wanna make several copies of this particular layer and I want them to all be different, but I don't wanna go through and change everything on each one. So let's think about the things that we wanna be different. First of all, I want each layer to be displaced differently by the physics. So I'm gonna go into the X offset of the turbulence field and hit Alt and click on it to bring open this box where I can type an expression. I'm gonna type wiggle zero comma something high like 1000. And by telling it to wiggle zero times a second, it's actually not going to change at all However, when I duplicate the layer, we'll get a different value, okay? So now it's kind of changed the look of it a little bit, and it's okay. I also want some of these to die off quicker and some to last longer. So I'm going to go to the life, hit the stopwatch, add an expression, and type wiggle 0, 0,1. So it's not going to change that much, but the life is so short already that there will be a difference. And then the other thing I want to do is have some of them be more opaque than others. So that's not done in the particular. I'm just going to do it in the layer itself. So if I hit T, I can bring up the opacity. Hit, I hit Alt and then hit the stopwatch. Type wiggle 0, comma, mm, 30. And then I'm also going to bring the actual opacity down to about 60. So now it'll, each one will be somewhere between 30 and 90. So that's kind of made that a little bit more transparent, which is cool. Now I can highlight the layer and hit Control D to duplicate it a few times. I'm going to go with four times. And if we start to look at the tail end of the smoke, you'll see now we have multiple trails and some of them last longer than others and some are more opaque than others. I really hope you can see that with the YouTube compression. But that's how we do that. So that part's done. We're done messing with particular now and I'm just gonna go ahead and highlight everything except for my main footage. So I got my roto, my arrow controls, my emitter, all my particular layers and also there's this light that was created. I don't know exactly what it's for but particular uses it to obscure stuff and I can't select it because it's locked so I need to unlock it first. Don't mess with it though. Just select it, select everything except for the main footage. Layer, pre-compose, moving all the attributes, we'll call it particular effects. Pre-compose them all together. And now we have that whole thing as a flattened layer. So we can mess with it a little, a little bit more. So now what I wanna go ahead and do is duplicate it and I'll hide everything except for this top one here. Turn off my transparency so I can see better. And I'm gonna use the extract effect. I have been loving this effect lately. It's really useful. I'm gonna set my channel to luminance, which is the default. And I wanna bring in these top two squares here because I wanna extract the darker colors and just leave the white. So if we bring that in, those will start to disappear, but then I'll bring it to where it's mostly just white. 
but then I can grab this bottom one here and pull that back out and it'll kind of fade out now instead of just being a hard edge. So this is why the extract is better than the Luma Key in my opinion. Really cool, useful effect. Um, I've never really, or I used to not really use it, but I don't know what was wrong with me because it's super great. So now that we have that, I'm going to add a solid composite effect to it which is another effect that I've been getting a lot of use out of that I used to just not ever use at all. But it just makes compositing easier sometimes. So I'm just gonna change the color to black so now this is on a black background. So it'll be easier to affect the colors and stuff. I wanna add a glow to it. And I'm gonna make this glow pretty tight and pretty intense. And then I'm gonna duplicate the glow and make this next one maybe less intense, but bring the radius way up. Actually more intense, I don't know what I was thinking. Cool. And now on top of all of that, we can add a curves and really bump up the red channel to turn this glow into red. And this wouldn't work if we didn't use a solid composite. So that's why we did use the solid composite. Maybe bring those other colors out. So it's just red, red as I can possibly get it. And then I'll just change that to an add transfer mode. It's looking a little hot so I can actually, maybe on my first glow, bring it down a little bit. Second glow, bring it down a little bit. I was a bit overzealous with that, but that's okay. That's what After Effects is all about. You just need to tweak as you go and let's see what this looks like. Okay, that's looking actually really good. I'm really happy with it. See with our, um, by using the extract effect, we've made it so there's a really kind of gradual change between this glowing hot white part and then it just kind of changes into the pure red and yeah, it just looks really good. So uh, basically we, the last thing we need to do is uh, kill a dude. So I'm gonna find a spot where it might be a good idea to kill a dude, maybe right here. I'm gonna have it hit a guy and just waste him right there. So so I don't lose this spot. I'm just gonna pick one of these layers here and hit star on the keypad to add a marker. Now we need to go back to production crate and we're gonna grab one of the, the SWAT and henchmen extras, but I want it to be one that is getting killed. So you can find those by selecting extras and then hitting the SWAT henchmen category. But another way to do it is all the ones that are dying say man down. So if we just search for man down, down. These are all going to be usable effects, except for some of them are hands and some of them are Spider-Man webs. Don't really need those right now. We just have to pick a guy we want to get hit. Why not just use this one here? So I'll download him. He's 4K, so just uh, be aware of that. It might take a while to download. Bring him into my project. All right, and so let's make him fit the frame and the part where he gets hit i want him to really get hit you know so i'm gonna give him a, a quick time remap so i'm gonna find the part right before he starts reacting which is here and i'm gonna hit time enable time remapping and add a keyframe right there and then i'm gonna move forward to where he's like halfway through his fall already and hit another keyframe and then i'll grab this key, first keyframe i made and the first keyframe of the whole clip Hold down shift to grab both of those and I have to move them together so I'm not changing this timing at all. But I can just move those closer and now he's like really getting smacked. Just speeding that up. It might look a little bit cheesy here but uh, we're going to fix it. So I'm going to move him in time so that that keyframe matches where I had my marker. So that's where he's supposed to be getting hit. Then I'll turn my other layers back on and I'll move him down below everything except for my main footage. And when you're trying to move something into the background, when it's a person, let's say that he's supposed to be about the same height as me. Um, what you wanna do is figure out where your horizon is. And it's kind of hard to see in this clip because I'm in a parking garage, but I'll say it's like cutting through my like mid abdomen here. So the horizon should be cutting through his also if he's the same height as me. So if I shrink him down to put him in the background, I wanna make sure that he's his abdomen is lined up with mine and that'll make it more correct and look like he's in the right spot. So there, he just got totally smacked by that arrow. And the last thing we need is to just add some sparks. So um, if only there was a place we could find sparks, maybe they have some on production crate. Of course we have some on production crate. We have so many. I'm actually gonna use this one, which is the Explosion Sweetener 5. Uh, it's a 4K effect as well, so be patient. Okay, bring that into the comp and I'll just line it up in time to have it start when he gets hit. Maybe cut off the first few frames. 
and it's really big so I'll scale it down okay and I just need to color correct my dude which is not gonna be that hard we can add a curves effect obviously it needs to be much darker so just bring that down and this whole scene is kind of red so we'll add a little bit of red to him looks like you can stand to have some blue added as well a little bit and there we go well I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial as much as I enjoyed making it if you have any suggestions for future tutorials or any requests for effects that you want us to make, go ahead and leave them in the comments. The monthly crate update is coming up in a couple of days where we will be announcing the winner of the Wish Gone Wrong contest. So if you haven't gotten your entry in yet, um, you're running out of time. We'll be announcing a new contest as well with a new prize. And that's pretty much all I have to say right now. So thank you for paying attention to me and have a fantastic life.